Hello, I'm back. Welcome to another video. Uh, this week's video is about Tresor One, and I know uh, there hasn't been a, a video last week, and also, um, yeah, there has been almost two weeks without a video. Reason is I got a baby girl, so I have some kind of high maintenance uh, project now on the side as well, <laughs> a new one. Um, yeah, pretty fun and uh, quite the exciting thing. So. Um, sorry about that, but uh, we get into a routine a little bit, so I found the time to do a video today. Um, and I wanted to update you on some stuff on, uh, the, on the Tresor One side of my side projects. So for the people that are new, uh, Tresor One is, that you can see on the screen here, it's one of my side projects um, that I'm building right now. It's a portfolio tracking tool. And uh, I'm basically a um, solo founder, if you can say that, an indie hacker. So I started with this six months ago in January and I have slowly building it since, launched in, um, in March. And since then uh, I'm adding users, I'm adding features, I'm adding uh, capabilities and some revenue even to this uh, tool. And the goal is of course uh, to provide an awesome tool for uh, people that want to track their portfolios and uh, ideally create some uh, revenue that is not tied to my time. So basically, if I spend time with my daughter, um, this thing still creates revenue. And when I put time in, then it's um, to, to make the tool better and ideally to increase that sort of revenue. Um, so that is the current goal and the current um, uh, setup that I'm doing since six months. And one thing that I noticed, especially now with, uh, with the kid, uh, is that I have to automate and outsource more. So when you start a new side project, it's, normally, uh, it's normal that you go for manual tasks. Like you do things that are not scalable, which is completely fine because you have to, um, you have to validate your idea. You have to see if it's, uh, if it's feasible. And if you automate everything, you know, you're not flexible enough to change and stuff like this. So it's completely fine to do manual stuff. I did that. Um, and there was a lot of stuff that now doesn't scale anymore. So in general, I am, as, as Tresor One is a side project, I have a full-time job, I have a kid, family, friends, do have some hobbies also on the side. Uh, so time is, is very precious. And um, that's why ideally we want to automate as much as possible. And this was, of course, the goal from the beginning. I don't want to trade my time for money. So um, I'm putting my time and my energy into an asset and that uh, can scale uh, sales and, and, uh, and stuff like this. So um, automation is, of course, key to free up more time for me for other things, um, even if it's working on, on some future stuff on the same product. Uh, and outsourcing if you can't automate it. And in, lately I have noticed that I'm super, super busy with non-scalable stuff. So for example, uh, I put in a live chat through Crisp and I got like 30 to 50 messages per day. And these were not like, um, I don't know, my PDF is not working. These were big tasks and, and uh, I mean support tasks, you know, these was, were discussions about um, about how we calculate specific uh, specific performance metrics, or um, how we uh, yeah the PDF import the roadmap stuff like this. So it was very time intensive, and uh, I found myself after I um, I yeah implemented the live chat. It was down here. Um, you can see that right. Yeah, it was down on the right here, and you clicked on it, and then it opened a little chat window. Previously to that, it was a feedback form and you send it and then I got an email and it was a one-to-one -one conversation. Then I had the live chat, also one-to-one -one conversation, but I was able to do it from my phone much easier. It was a live chat. So um, in general, it was really cool to, to do that and to be able to talk to people directly, but it was very, very time intensive and uh, I, I wasn't able to code anymore. I basically had to cut out an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening or something to do customer support. And even then I wasn't able to answer every request specifically if I had to dig in a lot more deeper and do research and maybe a portfolio didn't load, which I want to fix, of course, as fast as possible. But sometimes it's like 
there is a blip in the historical movement in the chart, like the chart you can see here and there's a blip and the user says it shouldn't be there, then I have to dig in and look into, you know, the history, the activity, see if the calculations are correct. And sometimes it's just nothing. It's correct, you know, that way. And maybe the user put in a, an activity in the wrong way or something. Um, so this is very time intensive. And then, of course, I do the coding. Uh, then there is some business strategy stuff that I have to do. Strategy, of course, but also business stuff, like founding the company behind it, the tech stuff, etc. Accounting, all this kind of stuff also falls on me currently. Uh, partnerships going a little bit into marketing I don't do ads or something but just like getting the word out posting here and there um, about the product this all eats up my time and I definitely need to solve it so uh, what I what I'm very intentional currently is how I spend the time that I work on the product um, and I'm looking at it from from a perspective just the same way the whole product was supposed to be. So the whole product was supposed to be um, not only of good value for the users, but also after that of good uh, financial value for me. So it should generate an income without me putting in an hour today to earn an hour worth of, of income. If I do nothing today, I still get the same income. If I do more for the next five weeks, I increase that income, right? So it's an investment into an asset. And I do kind of the same now to solve these problems. I invest my time in things that create more value to the user in this case. Um, so I could do live chat and add value to the user, but it gets like it eats away my time and uh, I can't do other stuff. But what I did instead now is I removed the live chat and I um, finally created the community, which means the community enables the users to help other users. So it still creates value for the users, probably more than it could have with the live chat uh, when they talk to me, but my time doesn't get eaten away. I invest initially time to create the community environment, uh, but after that it adds value to the users. So it's you know, again, an investment into um, value that is added even without me, hopefully. Uh, and there, uh, the community part, if you click on this now, it opens the community. This is circle. So I've made a video about the community part uh, that I wanted to build. Um, and I was close to building it myself, which would have been a huge investment. But then circle launched and I immediately jumped on the paid plan. Um, and used it. So if you click on community up here, you will basically arrive at this uh, community and I will show some stats, of course, uh, today, including revenue and, and uh, analytics and also stats from the community here, how it performed in the first few days. Uh, but that's also like it will replace a lot of services for me. I, um, I put product updates in here. We have discussions about stocks and ETFs. We have the help stuff where people post when stuff is not working, which is great. I also don't have to answer the same thing to like 50 people, but they can, you know, see that it has been already addressed um, and that I'm working on it or whatever the reason is behind some of the uh, bugs or whatever they find. We have an idea and feature section, which is locked to subscribers. So they have a goodie uh, to discuss the roadmap with me um, and a knowledge base where, where I basically start to explain what, are, what is dollar cost averaging, what is an ESIN, what is a ticker symbol and stuff like this. So going a little bit into the teaching um, part of, of the financial world. Anyways, um, this is the community and, and I hope you got the concept and this is what I do with, with multiple stuff. So um, with multiple things. So one thing also that I continuously do is uh, I fix the metadata for, um, for stocks. So as you can see here, Microsoft, right, it is a sector um, software uh, industry, a standard software, and uh, the country is US. And we have this, of course, for the 10,000 stocks and the 5,000 ETFs that we have in our database right now. And um, this gets time intensive because, I mean, the data is automatically fetched uh, from the Internet, from various sources, but sometimes it doesn't work or it's a very edge case stock or something. Then people write me that own the stock, uh, that have a holding uh, position in that stock, and then I fix it. And I have to do research sometimes even to find out, you know, what industry this company is in, etc. So this is also very intensive, especially for ETFs. 
Um, so I'm building a, um, a collaboration tool, which means then you have a list of all the data that is in Tresor 1 and I just start to crowdsource this. We have very engaged people that then go in hopefully and start to fix some stuff. They suggest the edits and what I have to do is simply do some due diligence and check if this was correct and then accept, accept, accept. And with that, we get a better data quality much, much faster to the benefits of all users. So again, users helping users, um, which is pretty, pretty fantastic. And um, after that, of course, we have the coding part. And also there I um, built a little team. I did a video about that as well. Uh, so building a small team that helps me with the development, the design, the apps that, uh, that we try to um, release, the uh, native apps in the future. Um, so this is all also then I can, you know, if I don't have time today, we still make progress on the product as we have a little team that, that starts to build and I open source more stuff. So the import is already open source, but I want to open source some other stuff. So even users that want the product to move forward, they can uh, go and help through open source. So this is how I try to, um, to not make my time the limiting factor by enabling more people uh, to help out. And uh, this is also where I have to say a huge thank you. I appreciate every user that gets into the community, posts there, discusses, helps other users, brings ideas, everyone that, uh, that contributes to the open source uh, tools that we released so far, which is the import. And of course, already thanks to everyone that will uh, help out with the data part. Uh, this is also a, hu a huge thing. And I plan also to give that back a little to make an API um, so other developers can fetch uh, that data uh, for free. So um, yeah, they can, uh, they can build their own tools or their own solutions or whatever it is that they want to build. So this crowdsource data is also given back if, uh, if anyone wants to. Um, so yeah, these are, these are the strategies. Uh, again, I invest in things that return more value over time without me being there, ideally. Um, and that's just like the SaaS asset itself, the, the tool itself. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm currently um, doing. And it's, it's quite hard, but I recommend everyone to everyone that starts their own project to think about this a little bit, uh, because at some point your time is the bottleneck. And um, if it becomes stressful, if you wake up every morning and think, fuck, I have to do a lot of stuff today, or you were not able to do something and you go to bed and you think, oh man, I, I didn't do anything today, which happens to me all the time. Then this project becomes more of a burden than, uh, than uh, something good. And this shouldn't be uh, the way. So automate, outsource, crowdsource, enable people to help. Now let's get into the product update. Uh, I show you where we currently stand. Um, we have a uh, we are approaching 2,000 signups and as you can see in August so far it's the 23rd so we have still a week to go we are at 908 monthly active users so mm -hmm -hmm, I don't think we will cross the thousand monthly active users yet uh, but hopefully next month so um, great great progress here as you can see from January when I started 8 which was basically the alpha testers 10 35 and then uh, i launched in in march and then it got up and up and up um, which is fantastic uh, analytics uh, also there uh, the the users um, increase week over week so we are approaching 900 here and uh, this gives a much better context though if i show you the 180 days view uh, because here you can see clearly see the trend uh, going upward and um, here the this was the launch basically here oh it was in april not in march so this was the launch um where i posted in various forums and 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 uh, communities and i almost didn't do that afterwards because i didn't want it to be spammy and especially german communities it's always a bit eh, if you charge money then it's you know like you do commercial and whatever uh, so it's it's hard to post in german communities if you um if you charge money for it because it's considered advertising. So I st basically stopped doing that. Uh, but I'm active in some communities that when others post, 
uh, I'm there to support. So if then there are questions or something like this, I'm there to answer questions. Either way, uh, as you can see, it has been down here. Here was uh, some post somewhere and it went down again, but now we have like a trend going upwards and we even uh, crossed the peak from the launch, which is uh, fantastic. So definitely a good, a good trend here. Uh, I'm quite happy with with the latest few weeks of, of development in August specifically. Um, and that is also reflected in the revenue. Uh, this is the Stripe dashboard that I use. And as you can see here, the payout this month is quite big. We are at uh, a th over a thousand euros this month, which is a first and absolutely incredible. The reason is because of these um, one-time buys. So if you, on Trezor One, if you go on, um, on the prices list here, you can see uh, that we have a, a normal paid um, plan. But if you don't like the subscription, you can purchase one time, lifetime basically, a lifetime version. And this has been bought four times, uh, two, twice or three times, three times this month. And this is what, what pushed the payout basically over the monthly recurring revenue to over a thousand euros um, this month. And monthly recurring revenue is also pretty nice development as you can see 50% up from the previous four weeks uh, to 713 euros currently. Also there, great development, can't complain. This is uh, nice growth and it definitely can continue like this. Here I see the churn I'm on the lifetime value. It, this These numbers are not as good as I would hope, but Again, I, I, I think the monthly recurring revenue will go down. I mentioned this in previous videos. It will get, go down a little bit in October, I think, because there was this, let's say, marketing push where I put out a, for the first time a promo code and we had like 50 signups a day, uh, 50 subscribers a day, um, new subscribers at one day. And a lot of these canceled. They just wanted to try out the three months that they got and this will expire in October. So I assume actually monthly recurring revenue will go down a bit or at least stagnate uh, in in the in october or the weeks around that um, but either way the um the the growth or the the trend is, is upwards and this is pretty pretty amazing and i even like by now i think in the last 30 days there has been a new customer at least every day uh, or let's put it this way, we had every day at least one new customer. Sometimes we had eight new customers in the last 30 days. There were only two days when there was no new customer. Um, so pretty, pretty good. This, I think these were all the statistics. I wanted to show you also some statistic from the community. Um, Circle has some, yeah, also some statistics here. And as you can see, um, member rates these are daily active members so it went up and up and up since its introduction yesterday friday uh, was not as big and also uh, saturday not so it went down on the weekends i can definitely say trezor one uh, has lower activity overall as well also from the uh, google analytics uh, so this is fine uh, but in general um, engagement and and so on it's it's up there and uh, people are joining as i only have this for a few weeks uh, for one week now a little bit over a week um, i have still to see you know how many how many people come in how many people are actively like engaged in this community but of course everyone that is huge thank you because it helps the other people and it helps me spend more time on the product and building that for you so um everyone that is in that community is a tremendous help um, okay these were all the updates hope you enjoyed it and uh, got a, a good transparent view of what's happening and uh, i hope to be able uh, to give this to you again in a in a regular format uh, i will definitely push for that try to automate some of the baby stuff have haven't been able to yet uh, if you have tips for that also leave them in the comments uh, I'll see you around and uh, thanks for joining in, uh, in this one. Bye.